Hi, welcome to another real-time faith lesson discussion for early teens class. I'm so glad you can join us as we study from God's Word and discuss about this week's lesson. And this week's lesson is on the way the world began. And it's an important topic because many of us are either on one side or on the other side. We either believe that we came from an intelligent and all-powerful being or we sprung up from nothing by chance. Which one do you believe in? Well, for most of you who are watching, obviously you believe that we came from God and from this all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving and merciful Creator. And why is this argument of creation and evolution important? To help us understand why it is important, we will use a few questions and try and understand it better. But before we do so, please let us pray together. Our gracious and merciful Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to fellowship again. Wherever, Lord, we are in this world, whether we are in a lockdown or, Lord, our churches are open, please, Father, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us to understand that it's not about the location, but, Father, it's about the genuine relationship with you. Please bless us and help us. We thank you so much for everything. And we ask you, Lord, this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, to help us understand why the argument of creation versus evolution, or the, to know where we came from is important, let us ask a couple of questions. The first question, why is God God? Did you understand that question? Why is God God? The answer is very simple. God is God because He created us. God is God because He is the source of life. God is God because He alone is immortal. He alone dwells in light that no man can approach. God is God because He understands all things and He sees things in the future and He knows them before they come to pass. God is God because God is love. Truly, it is impossible for God to be called God if He didn't have these attributes or if He didn't have these qualities. So the answer to the first question is really simple. God is God because He created us and He has the power to do so. Now keep that point in mind and let's try and answer the second question. The second question is not too difficult either. Why did sin start in heaven? It might seem like a difficult question, but if we answer this question, it will help us understand why the argument of creation and evolution is important. Why did sin start in heaven? Truly, the reason why sin started in heaven was because Lucifer, this bright and glorious angel, who was one of the leading angels in heaven, wanted the worship that rightfully belonged to Jesus Christ. Although Lucifer was a creature, he wanted to be worshipped as God, and he fought for the position of Jesus Christ, and he fought against Jesus Christ. But he prevailed not, and he was cast down to this earth with the angels that followed him. So the fight in heaven was all about worship. Now, let me add another question to tie everything together. I know I said a couple, but let me add another question to tie everything together. Why is Jesus worshipped? Or why does he deserve worship? And the answer is very simple. Jesus deserves worship because He is our God and because He is our Creator. John 1 verse 1 all the way to verse 3 says this about Jesus. In the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, 
as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. That's in verse 14. So truly, Jesus Christ is our Creator. And Paul adds on to this in Colossians 1 verses 15 to 17, and he says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And he explains that all things were made by Jesus, whether they are things in heaven or things on earth, whether they are visible or invisible, whether they are principalities or powers, thrones or dominions, all things were made by Him and for Him. So Jesus is our Creator, and because He is our Creator, He deserves our worship. Jesus is our God. And if you look at Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 onwards, you see the gospel that will be preached before the world ends is a gospel about worshipping the Creator and not worshipping the creature, to separate from the world that believes in worshipping the creature, to come out from it and to worship the true Creator. So at the end of time, just like at the beginning of time, it was about worship, surely at the end of time it will also be an issue of worship. And we are to worship the Creator. And if you read from uh, Revelation 14, verse 6 to 7, you will see, see this. And it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give Him glory, or give glory to Him. For the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth, and the sea and the fountains of waters. This is speaking about the first angel, and the first angel's message is to worship the Creator. And the second and third angel's message is for us to separate from the world that focuses on worshipping the creature. Who did we say was our Creator? Jesus Christ. And here, Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7, the first angel's message to be preached to the whole world. It says, Fear God and give Him glory, for the hour of His judgment has come. Worship Him who made the heavens and the earth, the waters, the fountains of waters and the sea. Worship Him. We are to worship Jesus Christ. He is the one from whom the whole world sprang forth. So if you look at the argument of whether we were created or whether we evolved from a soup of proteins that was struck by lightning and it came to life. The simple gist of everything, the simple point of all the argument is over worship. Do we worship the creature or do we worship the Creator? And Paul in Romans 1 verse 25, he says that people had changed the truth of God into a lie. And they had started to worship the creature rather than the Creator. And that's what we see in the world. The system of the world preaches worshipping the creature. It doesn't preach about worshipping God. It preaches about you lifting up yourself, you being the best, the human spirit carrying on. It preaches about worshipping the things that were made by God rather than worshipping the Creator Himself. When we look at creation, we should see the wonder and the splendor of God. We should see His love and His mercy. We should see His power. We should see the Godhead. We should understand who He is and what He is by the things that He has created. But Paul in his letter to Timothy, he tells Timothy, don't get caught up in vain and profane babblings or arguments. Just try your best to avoid them. So if there is an argument of creation versus evolution, is Paul saying for us to avoid that? And if you understand what Paul was trying to say, the truth is yes. He wants us to avoid those arguments. Why? Because really the truth doesn't need us to defend it. The truth is the truth, regardless of whether anyone defends it or not. But God wants us to stand on the truth, stand by the truth. And the way He wants us to do that 
is by our lives. The best way to show that there is a Creator is to be a new creation, to have your life transformed by the power of God, by His Spirit. If we are unconverted, then we cannot prove that God is the Creator. We cannot offer Him worship in the right way. And we are just like the people who don't believe that we came from a Creator. One of our Adventist pioneers, a woman who was inspired, she wrote and said, The strongest argument for the Gospel is a loving and a lovable Christian. We don't need to go and argue all the facts why we believe evolution is wrong. It's good to know about it. And it's good to understand all these things. But we don't need to go and argue over it. Here she tells us the strongest argument for the Gospel that will surely be evidence enough to convert anyone is a loving and a lovable Christian. Are you a loving and a lovable Christian? Another way of putting this is by saying the strongest argument is not the written word, it's not the spoken word, but it's the living word of God. Are our lives a testament that God has written His laws upon our hearts? That we have been changed from the inside out? And truly, if our lives are like that, then we don't need to argue for creation. We don't need to argue against evolution. We are a new creation. And they will see the power of God working through our lives. So that's what the first angel means when it says, Worship God and give Him glory. Worship Him who made the heavens and the earth, the fountains of water and the sea. It's by a transformed life, a loving and a lovable Christian. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And right now, God is working through all those people who are willing to give their lives to Him, creating and providing the strongest argument against any heathen person, against any atheist out there, against anyone who believes in evolution. Are you a living testimony for the Creator? Let us pray. Our gracious and merciful Father, we thank You so much that You have created us, that we came forth from Your hands, that You spoke and everything came into place. Father, we thank You that in six literal days You created everything, and on the seventh day You rested, because You are all-powerful, all-knowing. Father, You are above everything. Please help us to worship You, and please help us to worship Your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank You so much for everything, Father, and we ask that You may bless and be with us. In Jesus' mighty and holy name we ask this prayer. Amen.